Okay, folks. Well, welcome, welcome for those of you who are here and those of you who are watching this a little bit later on. Uh, my name is Justin Anderson, and we are going to be going over using priority workspaces to organize your CSD docs today. So I'm excited to kind of talk about this. Um, Google Doc and Drive has kind of been a thing in my life that has been difficult for me to wrap my head around how to organize it best. So I'm excited to kind of share with you all how I have kind of wrapped my head around that to um, organize things better. So um, just kind of first starting off, um, this is being recorded. Just remember our professional development norms uh, as we go throughout the day today, our 30 minutes, you know, do what you need to do to be successful in all of those pieces uh, as well as we're going through all of this. If you have a question, put it in the chat. I'm happy to answer it. Um, you can also um, unmute your microphone at some point and talk if you'd like to. Uh, and if you have a question or comment, like I said, put it in the chat and then um, we'll go from there. So remember this, everything we do ties to the multi-tiered system of um, support as we go through the framework. Today really kind of hits on a lot of these things because a lot of the pieces have documents, resources that we have in CSD docs that we're gonna be using for this. Uh, so today's learning intention success criteria, we will be uh, learning about organizing CSD docs and we'll know we're successful when we can identify multiple ways to organize and connect it to your own personal workflow. So a little bit of an agenda, we're going to do a walk around of CSD docs, just talk about some of the different pieces of it. And then we're going to talk about naming conventions, folders, color coding, workspaces, advanced search, and the dreaded shared with me. So it's kind of what we're going to talk about. So first things first, let's just walk around uh, CSD docs uh, and just kind of get to know it a little better. Welcome to my CSD docs. I'm so happy to have you here with us. Um, so just some things for you to note. Um, we're going to be talking about some of the folders and things that are over here on the left hand side. Where the priority inbox is one of the things we'll talk about your drive, um, which has all of your folders listed in it that you use and create. And by clicking on this little button here on the left, you can um, expand or contract that. Shared drive, these are things that you're um, shared with as, as a group or a team. Sometimes your school or department has a shared drive. Computer, you'll have this if you have um, the Google backups and sync application. This basically backs up your computer to CSC docs um, and things like that. Then shared with me, your recent, your shared, your trashed. And then you can also see kind of down here how much storage you're actually using um, in your CSC docs. So up here, you'll see this is kind of the action button. So it's next to everything up here. You'll see a breadcrumb start to emerge as we open different things up. You'll see um, kind of those as we open up different folders. You can see this breadcrumb. And so these little drop downs are the action buttons as it relates to that folder in the drive. Um, so you can click on that and see lots of different information. Up on the top right hand side you're going to see our organization so some people like to see things as a list some people like to see them as boxes um, it's really apparent when you get down to uh, the actual files so you can see minor little icons here and we can change that to a list view just by clicking on this button uh, the information button opens up this additional folder um, kind of information piece over here. Then if you click on something, you'll be able to see access information, activity, all those other things. So um, that you can open and close by clicking that I button up at the top. When you're clicked on something, you will see these buttons over here in the action, get link, uh, share, a trash, and then more actions. These are the same actions that you can perform by two finger or right finger clicking on the um, actual folder or document itself. Up at the top, you just have some help, and then you have the waffle that gives you access to everything else. So that's a little bit of a walk around of CSD docs and kind of the inside of things that we're gonna talk about today. So uh, the first thing is naming conventions. This is the most important one and is the easiest one to get wrong. Use a consistent naming convention. I know that um, I sometimes get in a hurry and I'll be like, oh, we'll just call this, you know, notes for thing or whatever it is. And then I lose it. I can't find it. I can't search for it because I don't know where it is. Big problem. 
be consistent in your naming convention. So for example, um, if it's related to a project, maybe you're going to name that uh, project in the name of the document. If it's related to a certain class, a curriculum, uh, a concept, maybe you're going to put that concept in the title there. That has been really helpful for me to be able to understand kind of where things go by naming them the same um, everywhere, I, everywhere I put them. Another one is using emojis. Emojis are super fun. Everyone loves to do them. Um, and you can add these to the name of a, a document, a folder, anything. And there's a couple different ways to do it. One, you can copy and paste things from um, the Emojipedia, which you can just go in here, find things. You can search and it will bring up all the different types of, you know, emojis that kind of match that search. And then you're, you can copy and paste that emoji, clicking the copy here. And then I can go into my drive, create a new folder, and we're going to paste that in there. And then I can call it books to read and then create that. You'll notice that anything with an emoji shows up almost first above um, most of the text, which is really nice. So if you're trying to hierarchy them, that will really help you. Another thing you can do if you are on a Mac device, um, you can do control command space, and that will open up your character viewer. And then you can search for the same things in there. And now you'll see when I click on it, it actually puts it where my cursor was. So once again, that's control command space. And that's how you can get that as well. So those are two ways for you to put emojis in anything. We recommend them in Canvas, in modules, in folders, in CSC docs, all of the things. Um, put them in there. So emojis are really helpful, not only for you, but also can be helpful for your students, multilingual learners, uh, younger students, all of those things. Okay, so naming, you know, kind of goes around everything. Folders are also going to be the most helpful and important thing as you go through. So when you think about folders, you really want to think about how you organize your life. And as a classroom teacher, that's really around curriculum, years, you know, periods, those types of things, or um, around projects, ideas, concepts, you know, uses of, of a, a document. These are all my disclosure documents. So I recommend creating and using a master folder. So here's what I mean by master folders. Um, master folders are something that encapsulates a lot of other things, a lot of other folders, right? So instead of having, you'll notice I have, you know, tons of folders here. And so in, in some of these folders, I have folders inside that with all sorts of information and, and resources, right? So inside there, I've got all sorts of other things. So something similar to creating those, whether it be a year, so you're creating the 21, 22, this is where you're putting all of the resources that you need um, for this year, you're copying them in, or maybe it's by content. And so you're creating one for your world history class. And then within that, you're um, doing more of them. Really kind of think about how you're nesting those folders. When Google uh, shows you things, they're going to show you things uh, numer alphanumerically first. So they're going to be in alphabetical order. Sometimes people want things up at the front, right? You want these things up at the top. And so we end up doing asterisks or pound signs or emojis to get your folders near the top that you use a lot. You can also do this with numbers. So if you see, I've got my number ones that show up after. So my asterisks show up first, my, my special characters, then my emojis show up, and then you'll see my numbers show up. So this is really helpful if you're trying to keep things up at the top. If you name it, you know, one and then C test information. That way that's going to show up near the top instead of further down uh, when you have, you know, I have my C test stuff down here. So it, it's kind of going to help you make sure you're getting things where you need to be. All right, so using those multiple folders and shortcuts. So another cool thing that you can do in Drive is you can put something in multiple folders. So it's a new feature that came out, I think, last two years ago, actually. 
last year doesn't feel like it really existed. Um, so what you can do is you can actually put a document in multiple places. It's going to live in one place, but you can put what's called a shortcut. Let me find a shortcut document to show you here. So you'll see how I have this folder here called active and it's got a little arrow to it. That means that that folder actually doesn't live in my uh, drive right there. That's a shortcut that if I click it, it will open the actual folder that's some, that lives somewhere else. And I can find out where that is by going in here and I can look for it and you know find out where that lives and all of those things. So I can see the details of where this lives and who has access to it. This is something that was shared with me from someone else. Because I do not want to be going through the shared with me every single time, right? And we're going to talk about the shared with me and some, some you know, ways to handle that. But I recommend if someone ever shares a document with you, you open up that document, the first thing you do is you're going to add a shortcut. So like this, I need this document. It's something I'm going to use a lot. I don't own it. I can click on the little I up here in this document and it will show me who owns it. So uh, how Sanderson owns this in assessment and research, right? So, but I want to keep a copy of this in my um, Google Drive so I can find it again. So usually I could make a copy of this and then keep it right in my drive. But then if he makes changes and updates to it, I will not see them. So what I want to do is click on this little triangle button up here that says shortcut to drive. It's going to up, open up my drive structure and then I'm able to find the folder that I want to put it in. I'm going to put it in things I love because I love a good assessment calendar. And then you can see I've added a shortcut to that. So now when I go to my drive and I open up things I love, let's close this over here, open up things I love, and you'll see a shortcut to this document. That really helps you organize things um, and helps you kind of understand where things are going. So now if I need it, I know where it is. I know where it is in drive and I don't have to go through the scary shared with me documents. And we'll talk more about those here in just a bit. So color coding, this is another great thing. Uh, I use it to a varying degree sometimes. Um, it was really nice uh, when I, you know, when you have certain projects and you're like, oh, this is everything related to this is going to be blue or everything related to this period is going to be this or, you know, this school or whatnot. So if you see in here, I've got these different green ones. I've got an orange one. I've got a red one. So I've got all sorts of different things going on, right? So to do that and to color code this, you're just going to two finger click or right click, and then you'll come down to change color. And then you'll be able to choose out of all of these colors, what color you're going to do it. Okay. So that's really helpful to help you organize some of those pieces. As you're going through, you can change that color within here. You can also rename it if you'd like to and see where you know all that information is. So that's super helpful as you're going through and organizing a little bit as well. So the most helpful thing in the world has been workspaces for me. And this is something, it's a new update that came out um, and some of you might see it and use it, some of you might not. And it's this priority workspace piece up here. So what it does when you click on priority up in the top left hand side, uh, it's going to show you like normal, your most recent documents, you know, just kind of things. This is Google trying to guess what you're going to want because you, you recently used it or you usually do it in the, this time. But below that, you're going to see these workspaces and workspaces kind of act like a a corkboard of sorts, uh, a file folder that you've collected and put on your desk. So you can actually um, start collecting documents that live in different places, but putting them all in one spot for you. Uh, so this is similar to the shortcut idea, but it's more visual. So for example, I am on a team, right? And I have other members and we have a shared drive where certain things live, but I also have some resources that I create for that team that live in a different place. And then I've got some other things that, you know, another coworker, maybe Camille has worked on and they live in her drive, but I want to put them all together. 
so I can create what's called a workspace. So we're going to create a workspace uh, together. So you just click on the create button and I'm just going to call this um, important task. Um, and then I am going to put an exclamation mark here. So there we go. I've got that in there. Important task with my exclamation mark. It's going to pop up and say, what would you like to add to this? You can add up to 25 documents. This does not move them. That's what's really important. This does not move them. It does not change the sharing permissions. It does not do anything different except uh, kind of keep a list going. So you just click choose other files. It's going to show you all of your files and documents, and then you can start adding to kind of where what you're looking for like oh i want this lesson study protocol and it's going to start trying to guess what you're doing um sometimes it's really spooky good because it's it knows exactly what i want so i'm like oh yeah i want this digital citizenship walkthrough i'm going to add that so you'll see what it does is it creates this workspace where i've got those go-to documents going on so I think this is really great for things like IPLCs, uh, department meetings, where you have all of these kind of resources in different places that you want to pull from, um, that you can kind of put them all together, right? So I've got one for Tech Summit, for the DTL Summit, right? I have the schedule from last year. I've got a timeline. This document lives in someone else's folder. This one lives in a shared drive. But I'm able to put everything together, and it kind of lives right here. Um, so that I kind of keep track and know where those things are. This is really great if your, you know, principal or your school shares some faculty resources and, and you're like, oh, I want to collect all those resources about, you know, the how to's of something where a faculty manual is or things like that. Um, you know, I can, you've got, I've got one here that's got a, a manual and some meeting schedules and things like that. So this is really helpful. I've got my project tracker here, detailed team notes. These live in different places. This lives in a different spot. This lives in, in someone else's drive. This is um, another shared drive, but I'm able to bring them all together. I recommend using the priority and shared workspaces to help keep you um, organized and together. That has really been a helpful piece for me. The next one is advanced search. I know every single one of you have lost something in Google Drive because I lost something in Google Drive yesterday. Uh, it just happens where things get in there. I didn't name it right. I didn't do a good job. I didn't put it in a folder. I didn't do all the things that I was supposed to because I was in a hurry or I did something and I couldn't find it. And I got really frustrated. So um, I was able to pull out my advanced search kind of ideas and it made things a lot easier. The first one is if you know what folder it should be in. So if you search up here at the top, right, it searches your whole drive, every single thing, which is good sometimes. Sometimes it's not. So what I like to do, if I know it should be in this folder, right, like it should be in this folder. If you right click on the folder, you can actually search just inside that folder. So everything you search for, it will only look inside this folder. This is really nice if you know exactly what folder. How many times can I say the word folder? Uh, it's exactly, if you know where it is, this is really helpful for you when you're searching. The next one is the advanced search. When you click in the drive, it'll come up with some things it thinks you want, some people that it thinks you want, or some types of things it, you might want. And you can cl click the advanced search, this little um, dials and bars over here on the right-hand side. The first one that's really helpful is the type. If you know what document it is, if you know that it's a, oh, this is, I know it was a spreadsheet I'm looking for, this boom narrows it down by a ton. So this is really, really helpful. If you know what type of document you're looking for, you can search for all sorts of things, which is really nice. The next one you can do is owner. I like to do this when I'm looking for something that I know is not mine, but someone shared it with me. I come in here and I say not owned by me because then it's not going to search anything that I own. It's going to be looking for anything that's been shared with me that has those words in it. So let's say I'm looking for uh, a spreadsheet that is not owned by me. Next, it's going to ask where. This is the same thing as our two fingers search into a folder. We can actually say, well, it was in a folder here or it was in a folder there. Okay. 
Uh, then I can look in my trash specifically because a search does not look in your trash when you do it um, just automatically. So um, you can do that. And then you can also search for your starred, which we'll talk about in a second. Then you can choose a modified time. So if you know, like I was just in there or, ooh, I don't know that I've seen this document for a while, you can actually choose a time frame, a name that is in the file name. So this one is only going to search file name. If you've ever searched Google and uh, you search in your drive and you, know, you type the word professional development and things pop up that just have the word professional development somewhere in the body of it, you know, and you're like, I have millions of, of res results, but nothing is actually named professional development. You can actually search just in the title here. So if you know that it has the words professional development in the title, you can come and just search that itself. This one is going to look for words that are in the document itself. So it's going to look anywhere in the file. I'm looking for these words. This is really good if you're looking for a phrase. You can do a quotation mark and even look for a certain phrase as you go through. Then you can look and be like, oh, I know I shared it with Sally. You can actually put Sally's information in here. Um, and so like, let's say I say, I know I shared it with Camille, Camille, like, let me find that document and I can look there. Um, and then if you, if it was assigned to you as like an action item or suggestions, you can look there as well. And then I can go ahead and do my search and look, I've got one document that is not owned by me that was shared with Camille and is a spreadsheet that brought that number down so much. So I always recommend using that advanced search. It's super, super helpful. Okay. So shared with me, add to drive. I know um, I've, I worked with a, you know, some teachers and I, and I used to do this myself. I'd be like, do you know what I'm going to do to me with today? I'm going to spend some time and clean up my shared with me. Do not do this. You're shared with me. Consider it like a, a Facebook feed. You can't go in and remove people's Facebook feeds and like store them differently, right? It's the feed is just the feed. This is everything that's ever been shared with you that's been updated, that's been worked on, all of those things. It is not worth your time to go here and clean things up. Remember, you're doing it from the beginning. When a document comes with you, the first thing you are doing is adding a shortcut to a drive and putting it in a folder. If it's something you're going to need, put it in a folder. You do not want to have to start going through your shared with me and finding things. All right. So do not think that you can like clean up your shared with me. You will never be able to clean it up. It will never be clean. It will never be organized. It will never be fancy. Ignore it. Leave it alone. It's a place you can go if you're searching for something that you know is shared with you. But once again, I would say that's when you're in shared your doing your search and you're saying it was shared with me, right? That's, and it was a Google doc that talked about in the title it had, um, I don't know, we'll just do something here and see what we can find. This is gonna be so much easier to find, probably don't need to do something like that. Um, oh, look, at, yeah, cause, oh, that's, that's not the right email address. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to find things eventually if I want to. Do not be going through your shared drive, all right? It's not helpful. It's not going to it's not going to help you. Lastly, before we end up here, we have about four more minutes. I just want to talk about these last three uh, because just so you know, recent is what have you recently opened, right? What did you open recently? It goes from the most recent second forward. And then starred, this is another way, um, and this is kind of where Google got the idea for their priority is people were using starred as like a jump spot, a place for them to go and get things and then and you know go away. This is very similar to that and what priority inboxes do. So with your priority, you're able to create these spaces where you have lists of documents. Anything in your drive that you star, you can go through and add to starred it will show up over here and kind of give you a shortcut. So it does help you also kind of cut down on some of those things. 
trash. This is everything you've deleted and it deletes after 30 days. So something will sit in your trash after you've deleted the document for 30 days and then it's going to go away. So just something to think about as you're moving through and, and working on your workspace. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, kind of organizing if you have questions, comments, and or concerns about how to organize your drive better or anything like that, feel free to reach out, let me know. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, thank you, Monica and Sarah for being with us in person today. If you would like more Canyons U, you can access that with the links in the the text. Um, and then if you'd like relicense your credit for attending today, you can fill out the Google form and get relicense your credit for that as well. And then once again, always reach out if you have questions or need anything. Does anyone have any questions here with us today online? Looks like you two are awesome anyway. So I'm sure you're great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy. And I will talk to you all later.